Good morning, Tube Tribe. This is a software demo. I'm talking about Virtual Ink, our real time light painting software. Let's start right away. I'm going to show you everything that I have here. I have these two cameras here. This one is for the ambience, this one is for the light painting. This one is filming what you're what you currently see there. This computer is grabbing everything from the software that's running on this computer and the cat just woke up. So two HDMI to USB converters connected to the cameras going to one single USB hub that is going to my computer right here. When you turn on the app, this is what you see. This is the dashboard and from here if you have everything connected you're going to see your two converters the converters are meant to take the feed from the cameras and to convert it to to usb if you connect the the hardware after you turn on the app you can simply refresh here and you're going to see your two converters um, this icon here is used to swap your camera so if one the one that is supposed to do the light painting is doing the ambience and just swap them from this icon here so i'll go through the rest of the of the dashboard but let's go to the live view right away because this is the, the cool thing in this software so if i take one small rainbow zebra tomb i insert a flashlight inside of it and i can start to paint right away Oof. That is so ugly. But you get the point. It's real time light painting. So that's the reason why I have two cameras. One is really to, to see the ambience. The other is the light painting. So the, the two cameras have the exact same settings except the ISO. I'm currently at ISO 100 on the light painting one and ISO 800 on the other one. So it's very simple. You have to make sure that the two cameras are more or less aligned, of course, to make sure that you don't have uh, a gap between the light and, and what, you're, what you're doing. And, but you can fine tune directly from the software if you wish. So just click on O, the, the O key. And from, from there, you can use the arrow keys to fine tune your alignment. So it's pretty easy. To reset the light, I use the space bar on the keyboard. Now let's, let's record our first sequence. Uh, I think it's with the enter key. So yeah, so let's go. I draw and I press enter again. And if I go on the player right here the, at the top, then you can see that's the replay. This is what I, over there. This is what I just recorded. And if I go in the gallery, then I see the same thing right here. And I don't have my email account set up, so I cannot share it, but that's the point of this screen right here. Okay, let's go back to, to the live view. So I use the, the keyboard uh, to record and to reset the light. But when I'm by myself, I like to use this little device here. That's a PowerPoint presenter. It has three buttons and I'm using the three a lot. So first one on the left, it's the blackout. So when I press on this one, it starts recording. So I draw my light and if I press again, the recording is stopped and then I can go in the player and see right away what I just did. Okay, going back to the, the live view. So if I draw, now I'm not recording, I'm simply drawing. So you, you don't have to record everything that you're doing, but when you have something and you want to clear everything, you just press on the button in the center, which is the, the next button on, on any PowerPoint presenter. So I click and then it resets the light. Uh, you, you saw that it, it took uh, one second to fade out, that's the cross fade. This is a setting so you can take it out. But if I do a couple of shapes and I use this function, you see it's cross fading between each of the 
drawing that I'm making. So if I want to avoid that, I can go in the dashboard, in effect, crossfade delay, I turn it off, I go back in the live view, I draw something, I click and boom, it disappears right away. So that's, that's an option that you have depending what kind of style you want to play with. Uh, going back to the effect, if I use the decay mode instead, I have a couple of settings. In decay, your, the light is going to disappear by itself. So you don't, have to, you don't have to use the remote at all. And now the third button is, is to turn on and off the light painting. So currently, the light painting is on. If I click on this one, then no matter if I have light, it stops accumulating. I'm kind of doing the same thing by turning off the flashlight, but it can be used in different cases where you, where you cannot turn off your flashlight. So I'm going to make this thing disappear. So let's go back to the dashboard. Okay, so, so far we, we've seen the light painting cameras here. We, we've been a little bit in the effects. Let's go through everything on the dashboard the actions here. So on this panel, I really wanted to make everything super flexible for you to decide when the light is going to be on, when it's going to start to record, to reset the light. So you have all the settings you can think about. In my case, what I've been using for the past two days is to make sure the light painting is on when I turn on the software. When I start recording, I want to auto reset the light just in case I have some, something hanging around. Um, and I want to, of course, I want the light painting to be on when I start recording, but I, I could do the opposite. I could decide that when I start recording, the light painting is off so I can move with the light and, not, and this is not going to be accumulated. But once I hit the, the, the light painting button, then it starts to be accumulated in the recording. So everything is very independent, giving you all the flexibility for the kind of things you want to, to do with. And if we go at the very bottom, we have the timer right here. So a timer is going to make sure it triggers a specific duration for your video. So I'm currently at 10 seconds, that's a bit long. Let's go to three seconds instead, and I'll set a countdown of two seconds. So you probably understood, understood that this is for video. I'm, I'm not using that for, for the kind of performances I'm doing with Kim. From there, let's test it just to make sure that it works. So we're going in the live view. And I'm using the mouse here mostly for you to see my cursor, but this is all touch based. Okay, so I can also just click on my screen and it's also working. This is all working from a cell phone also. So now back to the live view. If I click on the record, we're going to see the countdown. And then it starts recording. And it stops. And if I go in the player, I get the same thing going on. Great. Let's get rid of the timer. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Before we get rid of the timer, we can try something in the in this sequence. So um, I'll do a longer duration, I'll enable the sequence, and from there, I already have one. So the video sequence is really about the playback. So you're setting kind of a recipe for the playback MP4. What I did in this one is to set from zero to four seconds, I wanted to speed up that thing, or let's rewind it also, see what it looks like, and then, from second four to six, uh, we're going at normal speed and then speeding up from six to eight and the rest is going to be at regular speed. And if we try that, so I have my countdown again. So now the video is getting created. I go in the player. 
So you see that, uh, that I have one part that is reversed, I have some parts that are speed up, some that are at normal speed. So now in the input, I'm shooting at 1080p. For the FPS, I always go at 24 on the software, on the camera, and 1 25th, 1 25th of a second from the, for the shutter speed on both cameras. Very important. So for, for the FPS here, you want to go as low as possible. Otherwise, if you're, if you're going higher, if you go at 60, we'll have to process twice the number of frames and it's, it might be too much. And also, I always feel like the, the, the output is more interesting at 24 because it creates longer trails uh, before you see the, these tiny gaps uh, in, in the light. So always 24 FPS. The playback here, it's quite fun. So we can do uh, boomerang, rewind, the typical stuff that you, you can see in other uh, softwares of this type. You can speed up or slow down. Not that much for slowing down on, on this specific software because we're already at 24 FPS, so there's not a lot of margin to go lower than this, but you can try uh, going at 70% to, just to experiment. Uh, what I really like is to go at boomerang and more or less uh, 300%. So I'll go to the live view and let's make a test. So this is going to be accelerated at 300% and boomerang. So it's going back and forth. Next, the flip right here. I'm using only the horizontal. I'm using this one when I have a uh, computer facing myself so I can see in the, in the right direction because it's, it's quite hard for the brain to, uh, to, to work uh, flipped. So I go to horizontal here and then I can see myself in the right direction. Uh, I'm not using the vertical, both. I'm not even sure why we have that, but just in case maybe. Mirror can be fun, so if you click on mirrored here and you go to the live view, yeah, okay. <laughs> and you can also do 4x here. Having too much fun here. Okay, no more mirror. Now the output. That is how your final MP4 is going to be. So first one here, the aspect ratio, most of the time is going to be 16 by nine. You can shoot also different aspect ratio. You can go square if you're aiming only for the Instagram feed or even uh, 916 if you want to shoot for Instagram stories. There is a way to shoot everything vertical from the software. The resolution is going to be 1080p most of the time for the output. The FPS is going to be most of the time the same as the one you're recording to. So 24, very simple. The number of repeat is if you aim to do very short animations and you want to publish on Instagram, you need to be at least three seconds. So you might want to have uh, a repeat so your video is a bit longer. Um, in my case, I'm shooting 10 seconds most of the time, so it's fine here. And you can use this sharpen slider here just to make everything very crunchy. Let's, let's try that uh, all the way in. And if we go there, am I still in mirror? Am I still in mirror? I don't want that, but I want to, to, to go faster though because it's fun. So uh, not here, not on the playback. We want to make everything look fast and boomerang. I think I'm, I'm totally hooked to that thing. So, okay, so I record, boop, stop. I don't know if you can see it, but it's very crispy now. Probably too much, but it's good for the demo. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the sharpen. Okay, so now we've been through everything from here, all of the options that we have from the, from the dashboard. 
Uh, here we can see the disk usage, just to, just to tell you if you're running out of space on your hard drive, we see that the internet is up. Uh, why do we want to see that? It's, let's say you, you are doing a live events and you're shooting a lot of people, one after the other, and, and uh, suddenly the internet crashes. It's good for you to know that you're down, internet is down, but you can still use the software and you can still use the sharing system to uh, it's going to, everything's going to be saved locally on your server, on your machine. And once you go back online, then you can send these emails. So it's just an indication for you to know that the emails are not going to go out of your computer once the internet is down, but no worries, you're not going to lose anything. It's all stored on the computer. And here on the small box, you have the IP address of your local server. And that is a great feature because this allows you to use many of the features from different computers or different monitors. So you can set up a few sharing stations here and there using uh, uh, iPad, Surface Pro or whatever. And you simply use this IP address to, from, from any browser to access these, uh, these settings. So if, uh, and there's a shortcut right here at the top, the earth icon, if I click on it, that's driving me to this exact interface. So everything here is web-based and we have many, we have more or less the same options. What we don't have is the live view, but the rest is there. So I can go in the dashboard. So I'm able to change the settings in real time from a browser, from a second computer, and still have my live view from the main server, from the, from the main machine. If I go back, then I can have the player. And basically the, the player is what you're going to put on the giant TV for people to see what's happening in your light painting station. So uh, you, can, you can use a Bricks computer, a Mac mini or whatever. It does, doesn't need to, uh, to be the same kind of machine uh, than the server because it's all web-based. You simply need to be on the same local network and then you can access all of the features using this IP address. And so this thing is going to be, this player is going to be updated with the latest shot yet to, that you do in real time. It's super fast. And same thing here, you can go in the gallery and this becomes your sharing station. So if you scroll, this is all web-based again, so it's touch, so if you click on any of those, then you can use uh, the sharing system. So again, I don't see my sharing form because my, my email is not set up, but this is where you, you enter your email for the sharing. So this is the exact video that is going to be included in the email. If I go back, then I can add also all sort of thing. I can add a watermark, I can add a video overlay. Uh, we have some intro, outro, MP4. You can add a soundtrack. Um, you can change the background of these pages. And you can also add some color grading to change the colors of your animation right away. I don't do that for this software, but uh, I use that all the time with, with Xangle camera server. Uh, you get a lot of settings also. Uh, we won't go through that today, but um, this is where you want to go if you're stuck and you, you, you're missing frames. Just go in this panel and try to, to see uh, what can be done here. So I, usually I would go to six CPU threads because I have eight on this computer. The render frame rate is 24 by default. You can bring it down to uh, free some CPU from, for, your, for your processing. It's going to look a bit more laggy, but the end result is going to be better. And this is also where you set up your email provider. So uh, we're using SendGrid because it's just a, it's just a great one. So th these were the, the web pages or, or let's say all of the models that can be accessed from other computers, but we can also do pretty much the same from, from the cell phone. So if I'm, if I go here uh, on the top, there's a show QR code. So I click on this one and I open my QR code app on my cell phone. Then I scan the QR code and I open the link. And then from here, I got the same thing. 
So the same menu. And if I go in the gallery here, then I have the exact same thing. This is going to be updated in real time, just like the rest. So if I take uh, this one here again. So it's great to have access to all of these functions. This is also a way, using a cell phone, this is also a way to monitor what's, going, what's getting shared during your event. Okay, that's it for this demo. I hope this is clear enough. You can get this software from virtual.inc and I also list the required equipment from there. So thank you, see you. Oh, that's ugly. I need to get that out of there. Ah, boom.